There's still nothing like when you've been out for a while and you get back in there, the nerves, the excitement and all that stuff. And uh, I know the goal is to be there all year and just keep fighting and get better and see what we can do. On the number six, watch here, goes down hard in the whoops. Yeah, it looked like he got kicked sideways and falls backwards. Great to see. Have you changed tubeless tires much? Ah, uh, to be fair, no. I guess said I'm doing this race because I got uh, knocked out in February, and then I was out again six got weeks her. later for five to six minutes. And the doctor said you can't hit your head anymore, so I uh, was like, "All right, well, uh, I guess I'm gonna go home, get healthy, and." Uh, I'm gonna do a bucket list deal and that's Leadville. So, you know, I figured uh, John Weston was a big factor in me doing that as well. And uh, I'm excited, I'm really excited. So hopefully I can get a big old belt buckle. I train a lot, but like, I was groomed for dirt bikes. And so the guys that I'm racing tomorrow are like, you know, the top guys are like groomed for mountain biking. And I'm just kind of a, let's have fun weekend warrior. <laughs> Are you f serious, dude? Okay. I'm gonna go down and get that. Got it. We got the Beta Fuel SIS Science and Sport Gels. I'm gonna wanna be banking on 120 grams of carbs an hour. Oh, okay, so these are 40. So you're looking at 30, 160 right there. Three an hour. Pack four. Just these alone, I'll have 320 grams of carbs. And then, okay, so now we have the scratch, high carb, and that is gonna go in the Usway hydration pack. So that is equivalent to three water bottles. So that'll be 300 grams of liquid carbohydrates that I'll have in there. And then I have two Usway packs. So I have one of the feed stations. You'll start with this? Or are you start I'm with thinking bottles? of starting with two water bottles. Mm -hmm. At the first feed zone, you hand me an Usway. Where's the feed zone? We've got to figure that out. <laughs> and then, hopefully, with all these, I can fit them in my pockets to where I won't have to grab hat. <laughs> but I think I'd rather load up in the beginning and, and shoot over than not have enough. Yeah. So. Yeah, you might find. I don't know. We'll, we'll talk to John, but you might find where. Like in the marathons, I know it's like the last half hour or so, it's just you get queasy and it's hard to get the calories in. So yeah. getting them in early is going to be key. And then I don't think I want to take a gel in, or caffeinated gel until the end. Yeah, I would save that. Because what happens if your stomach gets pissed? So we're looking at 920 grams of carbs would be consumed between liquid and the gels. Not bad. So you have 115 grams an hour yeah. if you do that, which is pretty standard. I feel like it's pretty, the 120 to 160 is pretty standard right now in cycling, I feel like, grams of carbs per hour. But I should probably get a couple element packets in there too, huh? Yeah, well that's one thing to be careful of, because these don't have a lot of sodium. We're here at Leadville, Colorado, just chilling, 10,200 feet. About to go to the expo to get Journey's bib, bib, or packet, or something. Race number, how about that? But yeah, it's pretty cool. This is kind of like, I feel like the the heart of mountain biking in America. Probably not very accurate, but that's what it kind of feels like, seeing mountain bikes everywhere. Everybody's looking extremely fit, over-caffeinated, eating carbs. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yep, here we are, dude. 292, I guess, and then this will be on my back. Has to be visible at all times. I wish this was five. Oh. Where is she? Oh, she was nervous. She didn't want to come back to you. You guys excited? Awesome. Never second. 
sponsor of Troll Training. Let's heal your workouts with carbs. Yep, bibs picked up. We're gonna go do a little pre-ride right now, and then uh, I guess go back down. We'll probably have some nice food. Put the legs up. Got the Normatex. I don't have Normatex. You didn't bring I, the Normatex? No, I didn't. I didn't. I have never ridden the course, man. I tell you never what. Never been to Leadville in your life. Never been here in my life, and uh, I'm excited about it. Very excited. Tomorrow, every every part of the course is new to me, and I'm just gonna be following. Tell them some of your Leadville prep was actually with the Eli Tomac. Yeah. You were dropping them? Were you dropping them? Or maybe he was dropping you? Yeah. <laughs> Keep that one unanswered. <laughs> no comment. Yeah, so my, my training journey has been, um, it's definitely changed quite a bit. Doc is like, hey man, like, you're in a bad spot right now. And I was definitely having some lingering symptoms. Um, he's like, I recommend you take the next six, six months off at least um, from racing your dirt bike. And uh, he's like, but you know, you need to, you need to get active, and um, you know, you need to do things to um, to come back to 100% full health. So then uh, John Watson was like, hey, dude, you really should go for that, though. You should really try for this. I think it would help scratch the itch because I know you want to be back out there racing right now. So uh, I went and did the Lutzen 99er in Minnesota, and I qualified in. And here I am. I'm getting ready to do the longest race of my life, the most elevation gain. It, Probably one of the some of the gnarliest guys I've ever raced against, and I'm, I'm really honored and uh, looking forward to just trying to hang on the wheels tomorrow in the Gold Corral and see what I can do. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, 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 what's up? Hey, the bomb My name's Jeremy. Yeah. I work for Fox. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm just bang girling. Hell yeah. Cool. <laughs> Yeah, so the obviously I've you know been racing dirt bikes now for 11 years um, as a professional, and I've always rode uh, mountain bikes. And um, who actually really helped me really get into cycling was Johnny O'Mara back in the day when I was with him, and he was an avid cyclist. And then um, with John Wesley and then Alex and Troll Train, it just really took off. But I would do ride my dirt bike, and that's really high heart rate stuff. Um, and obviously, it's pretty risky but to help um, build up our aerobic face and to be more fit on the dirt bike, uh, we would cross train on the mountain bike or the road bike. And then obviously we did gym stuff too because you know, you're gonna take a hit and you gotta be strong and tough for that too. So, um, you know, I think I've learned a lot from the cycling and the cycling world has really helped make my dirt bike and my racing career even better. So, um, you know, I spent uh, the last couple of weeks with Eli Tomac um, and he's probably one of the best guys um, in the 450 class right now, still to this day. And uh, we were riding together and training. So it's kind of cool that I'm able to, um, you know, be off on a different adventure as far as racing my mountain bike right now. But, you know, he's get back into racing dirt bikes too. And, and now we're able to link up and, and train together. And he rides and we ride mountain bikes together. So it's, uh, it's been a fun trip. Everyone kind of racing today is kind of sickos in the mind, you know, because you definitely um, go into the pain cave for quite some time. <laughs> um, and this is the first. I got up at 3.45 in the morning and uh, ripped a big old fat pancake, had a cup of coffee, uh, did the business, and uh, now we're headed up the mountain to go hammer it out. <laughs> Prep for a moto day requires a lot less eating, um, and then I would be able to sleep in a little bit longer and still get my, uh, you know, I think our first practice is like 8, 15, 8, 20 in the morning or something for outdoors. And then uh, we do our, our motos come, uh, you know, noon, one o'clock. So I'll have almost a hundred miles in. <laughs> How are the nerves? I'm not nervous at all. Like I said, it's nothing like moto, but uh, I think it's just excited to go out there and suffer. And this is a lot different of like a pressure or anything. Cause in motocross, the repercussions of going down are so massive and, and so extreme that like what you know you're gonna ride your bike today for 100 miles and you're gonna go as hard as you can good day <laughs> yeah so normally I'd run like the cargo pants but uh, I got talked and convinced into running the full troll training kit it's a brand new kit out right now so if you want to get one I highly recommend it you're gonna be seeing a lot in this video today and it's a whole general week in a Leadville so uh, get you a troll train kit yeah what uh
all time right now. Oh, never thought I'd be so excited about a mountain bike race. <laughs> Super thin air. 105 miles of some of the hardest terrain you can ride at high altitude and um, some of the stiffest competition in the world. So Leadville's uh, it's got a little bit of everything. Yeah, the race as a whole is just, it's so hard due to the elevation. And it's, it's really, really difficult to put into words if you haven't been up high, how hard it is. But from a power perspective, your power drops between 10 and 15% when you're that high. Jeremy, I mean, Jeremy's honestly probably 20 minutes back or more from the lead group. So we got John and Jerma at the outward bound crew access point, just a little bit before it actually. So I think we were around mile 23, 24. Um, we saw the leaders come through and then Keegan came through in third with a flat tire, which is a big bummer. And then uh, there's kind of big gaps. Which way? <laughs> when are you gonna do this? You've already done it for I mean, next year. My brother's doing it right now. Oh, uh, cool. Yeah, cool. How's it going so far? So we're at the Twin Lakes Reservoir, which is mile 40 and also mile 62. So since Leadville is an outback course, they'll come back through here twice. So this is like the feed zone area. We're up. Um, Jeremy and John came through a year. I think Jeremy was uh, 223 when he came through, and John was like 219. So they're close. The leaders came through in about two, a little over two flat, 204, 205. And then it looks like they're going to come through here, and then they will go up towards the Columbine climb, which is, I think, at least 3,000 feet of elevation gain over the course of that climb. And then they'll turn around at the top of Columbine and they'll come back through here for mile 62. Uh, there's two climbs that are kind of the the big climbs that everybody talks about. It's Columbine, which is at the halfway mark, and it's 3,000 feet of elevation gain, up to 12,500. And that's pretty gnarly. It's just one hit. There's no downhills. Um, and the top, I don't know the exact percent grade, but it's so steep, you can barely keep your handlebars straight in points. So you're basically fighting trying to go in a straight line, you're fighting the altitude, and then you're fighting just being able to pedal. Um, so it's really, really difficult, and it's the halfway mark. So, you know, you're already at the top, you know, you're three to four hours into the race already, so it's super gnarly. And then when you turn around, 20 minutes straight downhill, uh, you're cross-eyed, because you just got done climbing, and then you have the whole course coming back. <laughs> I ever done a handoff in my life? No. Are we gonna practice today? Yes. Oh yeah! Jeez. That was quick. Nice. Let's hear go! Oh. <laughs> yeah. That was pretty good. Well, I just did the handoff for J Mark. Uh, John came through. I think he's 47th place right now in 4:14, four hours and 14 minutes. And then Jeremy was probably three to four minutes back. Handoff went well, and uh, he's smiling. That's good. So yeah, this too. How crazy is it? Yeah, John and Jeremy were like 4:14, 4:17. Keegan goes through in three and a half hours. <laughs> That's wild. But all right. So yeah, mile 63. And then now uh, we'll probably pin it to Outward Bound, mile 78.5. See if we can see him one last time and then just finish. You want it open? You want it open? Yeah. You want it down at all? Just to go. Hey, there's a big group right there. Can you get them? This is a tough spot. You can get it, dude. Mile 44. Don't know where to go. Get that group in front of you. Woo! Yeah, dog. This <laughs> turn. Just gets a little bit steeper, man. Crush it, dude. Hey, do you want a gel? Nice work. Nah, dude, I, I can't keep air in my rear tire. Ah, shit. I flatted like three or four times. Whoa. But, dude, Jay wants to fucking race up seven. Right <laughs> <laughs> Let's go home. Yeah, baby. Time for Shit. That was great. But. It's good to be out here.
I wish this was a little harder though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man. You got it. You go up this infamous climb called Power Line, uh, which is incredibly steep, and that's kind of the deciding point of the race. Hey, and where everybody kind of either blows up or they kind of make their charge. That's where Jeremy really excelled, was that that is the hardest part of the course, in my opinion, just because of how long into the race you are and how steep it is. And he just got better as as the race went on. So that was really impressive. But yeah, the race as a whole is just, it's so hard due to the elevation. I think the hardest call on mine was gnarly at the top, and then power line was just mental how steep that was at the top, and I was just like, oh. Coming out here to 5,200 feet. Absolutely. Hot body. Hey, for me, I am fun. Yeah, the phone, the brother. Yeah, I follow you. You did great. that I'd get off, re-pump it. But I had sub seven like in the back. Yeah. At the top of Columbine, I was four minutes ahead of where I needed to be. Oh, I flatted somewhere down Columbine, I don't know where. Dang it. Oh, I know, it's like halfway. So the whole second half, I was just fixing a flat. But that's okay. How many CO2s did you go through? Probably like six, maybe <laughs> five. You collected four off. Oh, dude, I was I was grabbing them. Like people would pass me, I'm like, hey, you got a CO2 on you? Like, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Take an extra. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, Jeremy smashed that for his first one to go 707. That's insane. Yeah, I'm proud of my result. Seven hours, seven minutes. I, I made a wrong turn with John Wesling, and uh, I, I probably would have been able to get a couple more minutes off the time, but my first time ever, I'm pretty pumped. 707. It's pretty good. Soul Chain, soulchain.com. Whenever his crash was, I want to say sometime in June, he started digging pretty deep in the fitness uh, aspect of training and started doing high volume, you know, 15 to 20 hours of cycling a week and uh, a lot more than he's ever done for sure. I mean, I don't think he's ever biked this much in a two month time frame in his life. So building up to it, I knew he was gonna be really good just cause I know he's gritty and he's super fit and he's got a really high VO2 max. And I think in endurance sports, like one of the best things you can have is being naively optimistic about everything. So he's just naively optimistic enough where anything's possible and it really is for him. So his time, it was really impressive. I knew he was gonna go under 7.30. I didn't know how much below he would go, but his time was, I think, for how little he's trained on a bicycle. And you know, he doesn't quite optimize everything. Like you can go pretty deep into like aero helmets and aerodynamics and all this stuff. So he didn't really optimize everything he could have even in, against the guys he's racing. A lot of guys he beat, you know, this is their full-time job. They get paid to race bikes. Um, and I would say pretty much everybody in front of him to some capacity is getting either free product or getting paid to race bikes. So for him to even be anywhere near that is is really special and I think you know, I've trained a lot of athletes and just incredible athletes, Olympians and people with really high VO2 maxes, you know, the 1% of the 1%. But I think yesterday really showed that there's one Jeremy Martin as far as his grittiness and just the, the effort he gives. Um, it was really cool. And, and when he caught me, uh, maybe at five hour mark, I was filling up with CO2 and it was really cool to ride with him. And I thought he could go under seven hours, which would have been absolutely insane for his first one. I mean, he's never raced a bicycle at altitude and he's never, um, I mean, he's probably only done, you know, 
10 races or less on a bicycle. So for him to be near seven hours is not super surprising, but also just an incredible feat. And I think, you know, he'll hopefully this scratches scratches an itch for him because I think that's, uh, yeah, most people would just be ecstatic at that time. Yeah.